corporations like Umbrella think they're above the zombie takeout, but they're not. What's up? Welcome to episode 229 of Zombie, Zombie Takeout, the B-Movie from Cult Movie Podcast. I'm Uncle John. And I'm Scotto. And before we get to this week's movie, you said something about a rant? Oh, yeah. All right. So, we're going to do this uh, live. <laughs> As I've often done to you, showing you things live during the show. Um, here's the link to... You want to play the first trailer on okay. this? Because uh, it's the one I watched myself. It is a movie called Project Almanac. Have you heard of this? No. Oh, good. Oh, good. I was sitting, uh, I guess it was watching one of the, the football games, probably one of the good ones or bad ones that I've seen late recently. And this ad came up. And it immediately evoked... Um, well, you mentioned Primer ripoff on the Facebook page. Oh, yeah. So Let me just take a look yeah. at this. Yeah. Take a gander at that, Uncle John. See what you think of it. So this is Uncle John's a live reaction to watching the Project Almanac trailer that he's not heard about, apparently, nor seen at before. What do you think, Uncle John? Actually, I have seen this before. Ah, you've ruined the game. I didn't remember the title. It might have been on one of the last episodes of Trailer Clash, but I'm not okay. sure. It did strike me as a primer ripoff, of course, at first. Um, I'm not really enraged. Uh, it, it's a Bay movie. I don't really care. And I don't, exactly. I don't expect anybody to really acknowledge Shane. But that's the worst part of this. This is Michael Bay stealing Shane's idea for primer and turning it into a stupid teen movie. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know what? Michael Bay has made many steaming piles in the past. But this is the first one that I've... The initial thought of committing some sort of bodily harm to him <laughs> has actually formed. Okay. okay. Because... It, don't fuck with Shane. Or, uh, okay, wait a minute. Unless you've got Shane as a consultant or something on it, or you're giving Shane some, some payment for it, then it's all good. Right, of but if he took this mm -hmm. and just did it instead of the do, you know, the tech guys coming up with the idea on their own, taking maybe the kids of the tech guy, right. you know, taking the product. I got the impression it was random high school students who just kind of stumbled onto something. Which, you know, you have random engineers just kind of stumbling onto something in primer. It was made in the garage. Yeah, yeah. But by the parents, I'm, I'm guessing, I, I think is what they were implying. Like, they find it in the garage. I mean, I, let me take that back. They did say that they made it. Like, we already okay. did make it. Yeah, yeah. Now, I don't think this will do well, for, for starters. Um, but even if it does, it's just an excuse to turn people onto primer. It's a if you like Almanac, check out Primer. It's a Goosebumps version of Primer, don't you? Yes, get, yes. Don't I, you I see what he's I doing. I see that. It just Jesus doesn't bother me as Christ. <laughs> I just see it as an excuse to turn people on to Primer. They like this, they'll love Primer. People talked about, you know, doing shit to Bull, you know, because yeah. of the work he's done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't come anywhere near this. Yeah. I mean, if I meet Michael Bay at some function, I could seriously knee him in the groin after this. <laughs> no, you know how I feel about him, Night Shyamalan. Oh, th th this is... Shyamalan's done nothing compared to this. <laughs> I mean, yes, he took Hitchcock. I I'm talking about Airbender. Well, right. That was the but... one that pissed me off. I, I, kind of, I kind of liked Shyamalan before Airbender, actually. But... But that wasn't like a movie that he stole from anybody. You this know? is true. He this just is adopted true. it, and, and it the did people a shit that job. were fans yeah. of the initial source hated it. Right. 
True. He didn't steal anything. I, I don't think he understood. He wasn't coming out of that. There was no winning in that. Right, yeah. <laughs> That's very true. Like Lucas with the prequels, he yeah, didn't yeah. understand that there was no winning. Mm-hmm. That the movie could gross half a billion dollars and they would still call it a flop. <laughs> Well, yeah, it should have made a trillion. Wait, what are you talking about? (laughs) No, but what he's doing here is taking another filmmaker's work, an independent filmmaker's work, and completely ripping it off and turning it into, oh, I want to say not another teen movie, but (laughs) it's not a not another movie. It's not another time travel movie. Right. They're more taking like the paranormal you know, found it's, footage it's, end of um, it. Yeah, what the hell is that series? Uh, Final Destination. Exactly. Yeah. He's taking, he's turned it into Final Destination. Yeah. Wow, and you know he's going to make it a sequel, and it's going to be a franchise, and it's just, it, terrible things are going to happen. I, the fact that this movie is being produced is proof that there is no time travel. Because <laughs> someone would have stopped it immediately. <laughs> The better this movie does, the more excuse we have to turn people onto Primer. Of course, but you, but kids think the first thing they see is the original. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. People are, kids are going to think Shane ripped off an act off. Don't oh you get it? That's the terrible part of this. And I say this as a former educator, kids are dumb. <laughs> I can't disagree with any of your points. It just isn't <sighs> pissing me off. Oh my god. Don't know why. Huh. I don't know. Like I said, if Shane's getting a paycheck out of this, well, then it's no perfectly problem. Cool. Yeah, yeah. But I seriously doubt he is. In fact, let me turn the IMDb. Oh no, they wouldn't even have it listed on IMDb if he was a consultant. As far as I know, the only movie he consulted on was Looper. Which is kind of ironic because the, the end of that movie does kind of have a massive um paradox in it <laughs> really liked it up until that point mm. anyway on to this week's movie on to this week's movie speaking of movies that did well but are not well respected <laughs> from 2002 it is resident evil and of course that brings us to the impromptu plot summary holy shit i haven't done one of these in a while now. sponsored by the t-virus new from umbrella corporation trust the t-virus for all your viral warfare needs May spread uncontrollably. Discontinue use if you see any signs of zombie apocalypse. And also brought to you by Hicks. Because we're all going to die, man. Anyway, uh, what we have here. Um, it's... Uh, how the hell did this thing begin? Anyway, we have... Um, oh, yes, people that's right. get trapped in a... In we a have an office building. Underground office building. Yeah. That's right. You don't realize it's an underground office building oh, until yeah. later, though. It's an office building, and uh, they seem to be having a normal day, except someone takes a vial, and you could tell they purposely smash it, and they bolt. He just kind of throws it across the room. It hits the corner of a desk and smash. Right, and that sets off this crazy chain of events where the computer starts to you know, pretty much massacre the entire con, you know, people of the building. Well, it tries to contain the virus and eradicate any possibility of it getting out and spreading. Of course, uh, none of that makes any sense in the very end when they explained about how the virus... <laughs> they, he, the computer knows full well the virus is protean and can you know spread through water air whatever it needs to do or blood or bodily fluids and yet and it also knows that it feeds off of dead bodies so killing the entire office building worth of people is um is Pointless. pretty stupid <laughs> if you know that someone's going to come down turn off the power and and let them out uh, it still doesn't matter why would why would you let it fester on the underground mm. you should just burn it yeah <laughs> right exactly why would it just torch the whole fucking place but anyway then you would not have this entire franchise of movies or and video games it started and, start, started it. well it started out as a video game of course and uh after we have the massacre um we we are in we are finally is in, in the residence of evil where the pretty much what I remember the entire video game actually taking place. Mm-hmm. 
where about five minutes of the movie takes place. Now, I'll say I haven't played the game, but I have seen a bit of footage here and there. Yes. The entire game is in the mansion. Uh-huh. But, of course, for a movie, a mansion is pretty confining. <laughs> so they say, fuck this shit. We're yeah. going down underground. Uh-huh. <laughs> so they, um, they, uh, they're they in this mansion. It, it seems like a married couple or well, there is the wife that's there. She does not know where her husband is. She doesn't she remember anything. She wakes up in the shower without a memory, yeah. Right. She does not remember anything. And um, ah, the Swiss cheese memory uh, plot device, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, we. So she, um, just as she's figuring things, starting to figure things out, it in swarms in this uh, special forces unit. And yanks her, uh, her and this other guy, off into this, uh, into the underground, where you find the office building, and um, there's zombies that do this thriller dance thing with mm-hmm. machine guns and dogs and, well, they have to shut the computer down because they're they're not sure what the hell happened here, uh, but they think the computer just went berserk, so they have to shut it down. It's their their primary mission. Why the computer wouldn't know that that would be the first thing that happens when something like this would occur is another crazy thing. But hey, <laughs> what do I know? So they go through a bunch of Galaxy Quest things. I mean, full-on Galaxy Quest things to get to the computer. They They shut it down. And that is, of course, when all hell breaks loose, when the zombies do come out and they figure out they're zombies. And now they have to try to get out of the office building before the blast doors are uh, shut on them and they're gone forever. Hmm. And uh, there's a nastier zombie and there's a lot of zombie scenes and zombie eating. And um, uh, it's a zombie movie. You know, there's a few firsts we're doing here. Mm -hmm. Well, really, the big first is we're going to go through an entire series of movies. Yes, this begins the Resident Evil series, all five Resident Evil movies, five weeks in a row. It is only five? So far, yes. Six will be out, I think, next year. Thank fucking Cthulhu for that. Anyway. (laughs) We'll see how you feel as the series progresses. That that may change. So. And and to quote Joel Robinson, just repeat, or or paraphrase, just repeat to yourself, it's just a movie, I should really just relax. So. We we yeah you know, I remember when we first started doing this show mm-hmm. and how we disappointed a lot of people of course but, well it's just kind of in our nature to disappoint I feel oh. yeah uh, we do it gleefully at times too yes. <laughs> it was effectively a, a lack of forethought on my part when coming up with the name for the show but right a lot of people here you saw the name of the show and said oh cool it's just gonna be a show about doing nothing but zombie movies. And so here we are. We're going to give it a try. For the next month and change, we're living up to our name, yes. Right. We are going to do see what it would be like to do nothing but zombie movies, fucking thriller dance <laughs> every week. But why this series and not the OG zombie movie? Why didn't we do Of the Deads? We did Night of the Living Dead. We'll, well probably I know. get to all of them eventually. I, I know, but wouldn't that have been made more sense if we had gone with the the OG zombie series in a row instead of this? I love these movies. So I just bought them and, and I floated the idea to you to do with them in a row and you said okay as long as you agreed to, as long as I agreed to do the Star Trek movies. Oh, that's right. I, I think I got the that. better part of that deal. Um because I love these movies and half of the Star Trek movies are kinda okay in my opinion. Of course. Um Whereas you may love half of the Star Trek movies, you still have to admit the other half are shit. <laughs> oh yeah, there are some terrible Star Trek movies. There's no doubt about that. I can't argue that. And, and we'll see what you think about this series. Um, An hour to get onto the ship? Yeah, we're not doing the motion picture, are we? I assume that's where we were starting. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> we'll talk about that off air. Watch some paint dry. <laughs> Two things about the Res Evil series. Okay. The thing about these movies, they're not good. <laughs> they don't pretend to be good. They're fun. And also, this is the origin story, so it's kind of the most boring part of the series. Okay. I'll even admit that. I do like that it, it did nod to the game, though. Um, there are points when they mention that um, bodies are disappearing. Totally a reference to the game, because that happens in the game. 
Yeah, I I had to look up the game because I mean, come on, the game is fucking yeah, 1996. It was a long time ago that I played that game, uh-huh. and and we didn't even play it that. It wasn't even that really high on our list of games to play. It was just kind of like, oh, that's a that's all right, I guess. I mean, 96. That was of course the age of Goldeneye. Ah. I wasn't gaming at that time, but I, I know Goldeneye was incredibly popular. Holy fuck, that was, that was, I mean, you could play four players and just, I mean, it, that was the game that, at the time. And I mean, to this day, even. Back to the movie. Yeah. I would normally complain about a movie that starts with a voiceover, but I like it in this case because it kind of fits the video game angle. Well, yeah. The video game starts with this voiceover that just basically tells you, here's the situation. Well, I noticed some points of the game that were similar. Uh, I think the zombie dogs came from the game. Uh-huh. And the whole basic backstory of the Umbrella Corporation yes. creating the T-Virus, which creates the zombies. That's yeah. from the game. Hey, you think the Umbrella Corporation was supposed to be GE? <laughs> I think it was any faceless megacorp. Well, in the intro, it talks about you know the Umbrella Corporation being a part of you know healthcare sciences yes. and military. And not even people not even realizing that it was part of it. A lot of people don't understand that GE <laughs> is does just that. I mean, they show on their ads, of course, they're they're part of the medical sciences and all that. But you know, there's you know, a serious military contractor too. But it's a Japanese game, so I don't know if they would have necessarily been targeting GE. Hmm. Now, another thing I love about this movie is is how they completely head fake you in the beginning. You think it's going to be about the people trapped in the building. Yes. That's just set up. I kind of was disappointed that it wasn't, <laughs> honestly. I mean, I knew it wasn't going to be because, of course, none of them were Mila Jovovich. <laughs> right. Yeah. So it's kind of like, okay, I know what's going on here. Uh, but uh, I loved the scenes in the beginning of this. I loved the intro. The and, elevator and... beheading was one of the most creative deaths I've ever seen. You knew something bad was happening, but you, the suspense there was really thick in the beginning. And drew you in. Mm-hmm. And then they go to the match. It slows down a bit, but you get the look at Mila Jovovich. <laughs> I should say Jovovich. I, I actually oh, found yeah. out the correct pronunciation. The correct pronunciation is Jovovich. Anyway. Is it? Yes. You know, that that's probably good. That could be a great sequel to being John Malkovich. Yeah, actually. Um... There you Before go. Before we go off on that tangent, too there's far. your movie. There are dead spots, but at least it does keep the action moving. Even when they did have the the special forces crashing in, mm-hmm. it was just kind of like a what? Like, why are they even doing this? You don't know why at the time, but <laughs> right. And it wasn't like it wasn't like a good confusion. It was just more of like a why is this happening? <laughs> but I mean, they enter the hive at the 15 minute mark. Most movies would do a half hour of setup. Well, <laughs> my as my I say in my notes, forty minutes to get to the fucking zombies. <laughs> but before getting to the zombies, we have probably my favorite part of the movie: the laser hallway. <laughs> oh, full! You know, I thought they were gonna do the old tired trope of the brother getting killed first, like every you know the old school horror movie. I was like, right. am I? I was starting to write. I thought we were beyond the brother dying first. <laughs> no, he dies last. Because um, that, that was always a thing in the horror movie. If they had a black guy, he would die first. Well, he doesn't well, die last last, but he dies last of everyone in the laser hallway scene. Well, right. You have this group of people, you know, this one black guy, you know, and then suddenly the black guy is dead. You know, he he's like the first casualty usually in the entire yes, film. Yes. Of course, they just mow down an entire office for the people, but these are protagonists here. Uh, what I was not expecting was them to go full Galaxy Quest. <laughs> it's been a while. How did they go full Galaxy Quest? Well, the when I say Galaxy Quest, there's a scene in Galaxy Quest where they have to go to like the engine room or whatever of the ship to put out a fire. Uh-huh. And there's just this absurd amount of obstacles that are set up with like flames and lasers and whatnot and in the middle of it Sigourney Weaver's character just breaks down like oh what the fuck who would put this here on a ship like this why would this be here Uh 
while they're sneaking through. Well, in this case, it does make a bit of sense because it, it leads to the the Red Queen, the, the computer who runs the whole place. Well, sure, you'd want it secure. But it's the matter of how it would secure. The lasers moving in patterns up and down a hallway. Until it gets to that last one that you really can't avoid. Oh, of course, yeah. <laughs> the security system toys with the people for some reason. <laughs> well, they do establish that the Red Queen is kind of sadistic. Ah, true, true. And and I just love that they cut the cast in half in one scene. They did. And I don't mean literally, literally cut them with a laser. I mean, <laughs> by numbers. They they kill like five people in one scene. Yeah, they do. Well, they took the muscle mm-hmm. and, and pretty much mowed most of them down. And I'm pretty sure the guy who first sees the laser and says, what's that? Wasn't in the movie up until that line. You know, I wondered about that. <laughs> I don't think he was in any earlier scenes. Uh, like, the the second woman, like, or the one that died first. See, the medic. She showed up earlier on the, the tram. Okay. She did have a scene before then. But the okay. guy who said, what's that? I don't think he was around before then. <laughs> and that's the thing with these movies. You just kind of have to accept that shit like that's going to happen and have fun with it. Enjoy them for being as bad as they are. Oh, you mentioned the OG uh, zombie yes. movies earlier. Of course. Turns out that George A. Romero was originally attached to write and direct this one, but left the project due to creative differences in 99. Um, there's a much longer explanation on Wikipedia, TLDR. Uh, he got a copy of the game, had his secretary play through and record it, apparently based his script very closely on the game. They rejected it, and, and he huh. su- he suggested that they don't didn't really want a movie like the game. They just wanted something more warlike. Yeah, uh, oh, that's and exactly right. They brought in Anderson, who had previously done uh, Paul W. S. Anderson, one of the many Paul Andersons. Yeah, um, uh, I should say one of the many Andersons who directs um, Paul, <laughs> Paul Thomas Anderson, Wes Anderson, now Paul W. S. Anderson. Um, he had previously done uh, Mortal Kombat, so he had some experience with video game movies. Also, oh, another you know series that is laughably bad. Yeah. And also, there are a couple of odd choices of shots. Like, there's this one close-up of Rain putting a knife away, like just you know back in her, her the sheath on her belt. They decide to just cut to a close-up of that. Yeah. For no apparent reason. <laughs> it was kind of. I mean, it's a director who definitely has ADD. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Which is perfect for the series. Um, and he's telling the story, like, oh, look, a squirrel, you know what I mean? <laughs> Except for all of the, and I, uh, did they have any slow motion tossing shots in this one? And I mean someone tossing something to someone else and them catching it in slow motion. Oh, no, they had a few slow motion, I mean, a few bullet slow motion things. Okay. Uh, they the slow had, motion tossing is a thing later in the series. They had a slow motion thing. The first one was with the axe in the window. When they were uh, <laughs> they were just flooding out the lab workers, mm-hmm. which again, if you if it commutes by water, that, that why why would you flood them out? Why would you? I mean, none of yeah. that made any sense. Mm-hmm. The more you think about that beginning, as good as the beginning was, and then when they explained what's going on, none of it makes any sense. Mm-hmm. Actually, my favorite thing that didn't make sense at one point, uh, Matt who turns out to be the brother of a woman who's trying to take down um, Umbrella, who got yeah. caught in the virus. He says, uh, of, a, of a zombie, um, well, actually he says after seeing uh, a blood trail that blood doesn't co- coagulate until after you're dead, so the body must be dead. Hmm. Blood coagulates any time it touches air. True. It's kind that of how it works. That how cuts, that's how cuts heal up. That is how we stop bleeding, exactly. <laughs> So, yeah, that, that line I, I particularly enjoyed. <laughs> oh, and having Lisa come back to her desk was a nice Romero kind of nod. Of course. Because they kind of hint at that stuff in the, in the Of the Dead series. I, I was thinking uh, like there's a whole office space thing going on in that opening. <laughs> it was just kind of like a, a zombie office thing. Oh, another Romero nod. At the very end, there's a newspaper that reads The Dead Walk. Yes. Direct reference to Day of the Dead. And the ending, I didn't understand 
or remember at least that raccoon city was not just some slang that they were using to call the area that it was in fact that may have been changed for the movie I don't, i'm not sure um, the name of yeah, the city the city that the hive was under yes it's it's the game it's from the game at least yes yes i don't know if in the game it was the actual name of the place or if it was just a slang term i thought it was well in the movie it's the actual name of the city which i'm convinced could be the worst fake name of a city ever in any movie <laughs> <laughs> why why would it be called Raccoon City? It's a Japanese ga- game. Consider well, some of the na- things that they've named things. Very true, very true. It is a Japanese thing. Maybe there's a translation issue going on here. But it that has to be the worst. <laughs> you can't top that. Now, Michelle Rodriguez, who played Rain Ocampo, one of the um, military types, got involved because she's a huge fan of the game. In fact, she told her agent any if any script comes up for Resident Evil, she wants in. Wow. Uh, and Mila Jovovich got involved because her brother Marco is a huge fan of the game. I, I found Rodriguez annoying in this. Uh, she normally kind of irritates me. This one, I don't know, it fit her. I, I, I kind of, I can, I'm kind of ambivalent about her in general. And it was kind of annoying that they they learned about the effects of the virus. And uh, we're still like, oh, let's carry these people around with us, even though they're obviously you know, infected and going to churn. But every zombie movie series has to do that. There has to be the person who may or may not turn. Well, wait a minute. They normally don't understand what's going on, or, or that's how they usually figure out how it transmits. True, true. And then you know they learn the hard way. Mm. This had a computer explain <laughs> to them how it was designed to transmit and they still were like oh yeah so you come with us right (laughs) there there wasn't a single character who was like all right fuck these guys let's leave them behind because they needed a convenient way to you know shoot someone into the button that opened the compartment that allowed her to kill the looker (laughs) it was pretty damn funny the way he just casually does it kind of with the smirk like i know what i'm gonna do Need to kill her and push the button at the same time. Shoot her into the button. Like he's calling a pool shot. <laughs> yeah. Like like he's Tom Cruise in Color of Money or something. <laughs> Zombie in the side quarter pocket. <laughs> By the way, trivia: Milo Jovovich did all of her own stunts except for one, the jump in the sewer. Did she really hit a dog? Probably. Um, actually, I don't know. I, I was watching some blooper reels for the other movies, and they actually used a surprising amount of practical effects. Really? Um, in fact, some of the dogs in the later movies are real. or They're practical effects. They're not actual dogs, obviously. Um, and given what they do, it, you'd be surprised to find that out. Um, <laughs> so I don't know. Obviously, she didn't kick a real dog, but it may have been an actual thing that she kicked. Take a dog, kick it in the ass. I'll take a dog, put up a dog's ass. But aside from the scene where she jumps up, uh, you know, to catch the pipe in the sewer, she did all of her own stunts, and all of the cuts and bruises on her are real. Oh, nice. No makeup. Would they, if they redid Blazing Saddles, would they have Mongo punch a CGI horse? Probably. <laughs> Let's talk about movies not playing. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> that's one that will never get remade oh boy i think the only thing we were missing for the ending of this mm-hmm. was a statue of liberty on the uh coming up out of the earth <laughs> <laughs> when they make it out of the hive um alice it's just alice and matt are we and... gonna spoil the ending i guess you, you kind know. of already did um There's when i mentioned sequel. the headline that's true he was scratched by one of those zombies, um, and she has the cure. They smuggle it out, and she goes to you know inject him, and then the guys in the white bunny suit show up and take them away. She ends up strapped down to a table. Because they loved the uh, scene with the special forces in the beginning so much. They had, they to, had do to do it do again with guys in bunny suits. Thing again. She ends up strapped to the table. She makes her way out. They let her out, obviously. And she finds that the virus has taken over Raccoon City. Well, they do, the sequel. they do, of course, spell it out for you just in case uh, that you hear the guy going, we got to go down there and find out what happened. So you knew they were going to reopen the blast doors 
and let all the shit out. And yes, Racket, that when I figured out what I found, the real horror was finding out that Raccoon City was the real name <laughs> of the city. <laughs> like, oh my god, did the writer really do that? <laughs> How embarrassing. The next one takes place entirely in Raccoon City. Of course. I mean, well, it also had a very, you know, Evil Dead ending, you know, where, you know, mm. <laughs> you just feel like, yeah. you know, Mila Jovovich is, is Ash, and she's just, oh, yeah, you yeah. know, like, ah. That's she, kind of what she turns into. Yeah. I mean, just kind of what she was to begin with. Um, they established that she was a security agent for Umbrella Corp, and, and she had a lot of um, training that she didn't remember, but she could still do. Yeah. She ends up with superpowers in the next few movies. Well, you know, the Swiss cheese memory thing, you know, yeah. it's just like, like, I mean, they made a whole fucking series off it with Quantum Leap. Yeah, true. Good point. <laughs> That's the only time I think they've ever done that, where the whole series was you know, based on, around the uh, the Swiss cheese memory plot device. And things just would come back in dribs and drabs just to move the story along. All right, so on to sequels and remakes. I wonder if they'll ever make a sequel to this one. <laughs> there have so far been four sequels. Fifth is will be out next year. The second and third movies, uh, Apocalypse and Extinction, were not directed by Paul W.S. Anderson. Of course. He was busy doing uh, Death Race. He wrote and produced them. Is Mila in all of them? Yes. She's, I think, Damn. the only character who's in all of the movies. There are others who pop in and out. Does she turn down a paycheck? <laughs> well, she's also married to Paul W.S. Anderson. So. Oh, but he didn't direct them. Well, but he wrote and produced them. Oh, okay. The second one was directed by Alexander Witt, who had never directed a movie before and hasn't directed anything since. Oh, it's the worst that could happen. <laughs> <laughs> the third one, as I've mentioned before, was directed by Russell Mulcahy. I think it's his finest work. <laughs> and he's perfectly suited for this. Oh, yeah. That's my favorite of the movies. This is the third one. I think they peaked at three. Um, of course, I'm hopeful for the last one. But, and, and four and five are good. But All right, so on to Brains. On to Brains. I'm kind of still struggling with this one a bit. On its own, it's maybe not as high as I'm inclined to give it, just because I want to recommend the series, and this is the first one in the series, so I have to recommend it. On its own is a three, three and a half, but I'm going to go to four, just to recommend the entire series. Um, yeah, I, this, I was expecting a lot worse, honestly. Uh, it <laughs> that, I, I tried to mitigate your uh, expectations over the last few weeks. It definitely was better than I was expecting. I would have loved a movie with just The Office. <laughs> I think that was such a better premise. And then, I mean, if you're really a fan of the source material, as as you've usually been, not in this case. I've never played the games, and I'm glad I didn't, because I would have hated it if I, if I had Because, yes, the whole game takes place in the fucking mansion. Oh, they, they used very little of the actual source material. And then the mansion is in, like, you know, it's after the intro, and then it's right before the, the climax. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> they run through it a few times. They, they you know, play house in it. They have special forces come in and yank them out. That's it. <laughs> there is no wandering the mansion. Um, but I don't give a shit about source material, especially for a video game. So, I mean, it, it had its moments. It was entertaining. Uh, but I don't think I'd go so far as recommended. So I'm going to go three. Okay. And what have we learned? Uh, I learned two things here, I think. Um, I I now know what it's like to have watched someone play a video game for an hour and a half. <laughs> oh, and the other thing is, of course, I'm Missing You Already is no substitute for There Can Be Only One. And I learned that when you turn off the power, somehow electrical doors open. <laughs> you know, I did not get that either. They're like Things were offline... And then they were online for hmm. no reason, even though the computer still wasn't on for the, at the time when it went online. Uh -huh. Convenience. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of that in this movie. You just kind of have to accept it and roll with it and have fun with it. These are Misty movies. These are movies that you watch because they're fun and ridiculous. And they get more ridiculous as they go, which I think will increase the entertainment value. 
You know, there is something that we forgot to talk about at the top of the show. Okay. This is a good time for them. <laughs> and it, and it was the uh, the movie Mother's Milk. Oh, yes. They're following us on Twitter, by the way. Cool. Very nice. Um, anyway, uh, I got to watch... I, I didn't want to do the entire thing I decided, because if I watched the whole thing before we review it, I think it would... Uh, it would right. uh, spoil the episode. I like a to bit. go in cold. I do like to go in cold, but I, I so I tried to sit down for just like you know a ten fifteen minute kind of you know see if this is in our wheelhouse thing or not, and managed to get sucked into it for a good forty five minutes or so. Oh. We, we do need to review this movie without any doubt. All right. It, it's um, you know I haven't seen Tusk. <laughs> But it, it has a bit of that feel to it, only oh more. Uh, <laughs> I, and I think I do think the um, the David Hyde Pierce one is pretty hmm. uh, accurate too, okay. but more in the deliberate sense. Whereas the David Hyde Pierce one, I think stuff kind of happened to him. <laughs> yeah. But no, this is the uh, the protagonist is actively. Uh, seeking women to do this to. Ah, I got gotcha, you, got gotcha. you. <laughs> For prey, he is a predator. Uh-huh. But yeah, it um, it is definitely worth seeing, All right. and uh, we we should review it. And uh, yeah, you guys should take a look at it too. It's called Mother's Milk, and I think we should. Do we put a trailer on on the site yet? Not yet. I think it'd be cool if, if listeners watch the movie before we reviewed it. Okay, okay. All right, so until next week, and we'll be reviewing, as I mentioned earlier, Resident Evil Apocalypse, part two in the series. Yeah, well, one thing I dreaded when we started doing this was becoming the, the Misty guys. And I have a feeling we're going to turn into that by the fifth week of this. I think you're confirming my, my suspicion that I got the better end of our, our deal with the Star Trek movies in this, because I, I kind of almost like half of the Star Trek movies and I love these you even if you love half of the Star Trek movies you still don't like the other half and you well so far don't like these too much so yeah I made it up better I made it up better I think what I'm afraid of is usually the first one in the series is the best not in this case at least it's not the most fun okay good because this is the one where they tried to make a legitimately good movie and maybe marginally succeeded i think you know what the problem with this one is and why i mean i didn't go all the way with it or recommend it i think they were taking a lot of other movies that were done better (laughs) but you know it was kind of watered down i mean yeah they were doing a more a horror version of aliens more than sort of than anything and from two on they just embrace the ridiculousness of the idea and just go over the top with it okay so right. it gets a lot more fun. Uh, they stop trying to make a good movie and they just have fun. And I think here's a New Year's resolution. Instead of, you know how Bob Barker always ended the prices right with have your pets spayed or neuter? Mm-hmm. I think I should end it. If you see Michael Bay at a cocktail party, <laughs> have him spayed and neutered. Knee him in the groin. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So until next time. Go to zombietakeout.com, check out the album art, the episode description, of course the episode itself, which you're already listening to. Links to find us on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, and YouTube. Links to subscribe via RSS and iTunes. Please leave us a rating and a review on iTunes. We'd really appreciate it. Also, if you enjoy the show, spread the word. You know, Give us a little word of mouth. We, of course, appreciate all of our listeners, but more would be better. You'll also find the movie list, every movie we've reviewed so far, and every movie we're going to review. Turns out I've been misspeaking. I said it was up through Donnie Darko. I noticed... Buffy the Vampire Slayer is after Donnie Darko. Oh, okay. So that's an interesting combination. Uh, I, maybe I, think, we... I think you should put Mother's Milk in right after this series. Right after Resident Evil? Okay. Yeah. And then also maybe we could do uh, Star Trek the motion picture after Buffy. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> you know, we're not going to do those, as we've, we've established, you know, in a row, but we're, we're going to spread them out. But, you know, might as well get a good start on it. You know, with the Star Trek movies, though, uh, you, they have this nice run from like two through, I'm trying to think if it was five or six, where it's just co- a continuous movie just about. Yeah. Actually, two, three, and four 
are pretty much a continuous movie. Uh-huh. And then five and six are kind of tacked on more. Isn't three the one where they see God? No, I think it was five. Five. Oh, okay. What was three then? Three was... Four was Voyage Home. Two was Search for home. Spock. Oh, okay. Um, Christopher Lloyd as a Klingon. Okay, okay. So so that one might be enjoyable. Um, no, it's not. No? Okay. <laughs> Christopher Lloyd will probably be enjoyable. Christopher Lloyd is good. The rest is pretty god-awful. <laughs> It's an odd number Star Trek movie. That that is where the odd number thing started from because the first one and the third one and the are fifth. bad. <laughs> but from them on, then Final on, Frontier? I think the odd one. I think I think it's Final Frontier when they see. They you know what? God. I liked Final Frontier where they go to meet God. Okay. It was fun. <laughs> anyway, you'll also find the request form if you've got a movie you'd like to hear us review. Please leave it on the request form, and of course the recommendations list. I tried. Hopefully later installments in the series will make it to the reckless. I have hope for at least the third one. Extinct. I, I think if we're recommending stuff, I don't think there's any need for continuity in this series. Yeah, <laughs> okay. You can damn well figure out what happened to this. <laughs> good point, good point. They're all zombie movies. Evil Corporation turned everyone into zombies. Yeah, yeah. Basically. Made a stupid computer to protect it. Mm-hmm. And it all well, went to shit. The, the Red Queen is only relevant in this one, and I think she pops up again in a later movie. I'm not exactly sure. Two and three, which I think are the best, you don't need to know anything other than they're zombie movies. All right. You can also email us, zombietakeout at gmail.com, or leave us a voicemail at 414-368-ZTO1, or for the alphanumerically challenged... You can go fuck yourself. 414-368-9861. Of course, always remember that you'll always be calling from the middle of Milwaukee. And of course, until next time, always remember, never forget, wherever you go in life, there you are. There you are. Get out, get out, you can't be in here. Titles, I have uh, Red Queen's Gambit. Not going, bad. Going viral. No. <laughs> yeah. I thought of all of these before actually watching the movie. Oh, okay. I've seen it two or three times before. <laughs> um, of the obligatory based on a song by Jefferson Airplane. And uh, the only one I really Resident like... Resident Evil? What? Resident Evil? There's a million... Uh, Alice in Wonderland references in the movie. Oh, oh yeah, I get it. Okay, yeah. And the 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 one I like, uh, Uber Alice. Hmm. Milo Jovovich's character is named Alice. I don't think it's actually said in the movie. Yeah, I think it, it, I at least noticed it on IMDb. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. What I've got is Thriller Dance Massacre. <laughs> nice. Apparently, you did some reading about the movie. Uh, no, actually, I just oh. got that from watching some of the zombie scenes. It's not in my trivia, so I'll mention it. All the zombies were actually, actually dancers. Okay. Uh, it just, it seemed like, mm-hmm. like, kind of the thriller video at one point with machine mm-hmm. guns, so. Yeah. Um, I got, I think the other two I, I really like. Uh, let's see, put on your zombie fighting party dress. Mm-hmm. Or my favorite, no zombie dogs were hurt during the making of this film. A little long. I know. <laughs> and, uh, what do you think of Uber Alice? It's just hitting all cats oh. I have in my notes. Yeah. You hit that dog! <laughs> <laughs> I really I really like Uber Alice. But it's Uber Alice. Or it's, Uber it's a play on words. Yeah, yeah. Or that, or, or put on your zombie fighting party dress, which again, kind of long. <laughs> but it is absurd that she's wearing this party dress. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Except, see, that that occurred to me at the very beginning of the movie. The only time I've ever thought that was a weird choice. Except she didn't know she was going to be fighting. You know, I don't think she would have put that on if she knew it was coming. <laughs> it was left out for her. Was it? Okay. I thought yes. she, because they show her going through the drawers.
it was left lying on the bed for her. Like, okay. the, you know, put this on because we're going to go fucking <laughs> fuck shit up. <laughs> but, I mean, it does make sense why it was it was chosen for yeah. her. But <laughs> it's just kind of funny that, you know, she's running around in this party dress. It's more absurd than the Fifth Element outfit she wore. <laughs> I think that is the one to go with the party dress because okay. it 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 really does fit the entire film. <laughs> Put on your zombie fighting party dress. Yeah. I was like, where did I get this from anyway? Then it, it occurred to me like later, oh yeah, Tom Petty, Last Chance with Mary Jane. <laughs> Gotta put on, on your zombie fighting party dress. <laughs> 